How are you feeling? How are Oklahoma fans feeling about the last hurrah this year in the Big 12 and then walking into the lion's den in the SEC? Is, is there a nervous feeling? Is it a nervous excitement? Is it anxiousness? Kind of what is it? Well, I'll tell you personally, I'm stoked for SEC play, boys, because I'm coming at you right now from a Panera outside Wichita, Ooh. Kansas. This is the mm. nature of life on the road in Big 12 territory. And you know, every time I hear Jack White sing the last verse of Seven Nation Army and he goes, I'm going to Wichita. I feel like I can say this as a native Midwesterner. I just find myself asking, why? <laughs> like, why Wichita? Like, why anywhere in this neck of the woods? So I think in my in my humble opinion, SEC territory in general, SEC road venues, and this is far from a hot take, but the entire SEC experience, I think, uh, is just going to be so far and away above what OU fans have been used to for decades in the Big 12. And I think this is a program that competitively is in a place based on the way that they recruited these last couple cycles and based on the way that they've attacked the transfer portal I think they're in a place where you give it a year, uh, you give Venables year two, one final hurrah in the Big 12. I think by that time, Oklahoma should be in a place where they're able to jump right into the SEC and be competitive. And I'm not talking on Alabama and Georgia's level because those two programs are head and shoulders above the rest right now, not just in the SEC, but in all the college football. I think Oklahoma fans are – cautiously optimistic about the pending move to the SEC and I don't think last year's six and seven team did a whole lot to detract from that simply because everybody kind of understood in the moment and understands all the more in hindsight that what Venables was dealing with was a complete reversal of the existing culture. For sure, and and the identity of the team. You know, you're looking at the physicality that Brent Venables brings, and obviously with his defensive background, that's something that he understands. Not that Lincoln didn't want to be physical, and I think a lot of Lincoln's offense is predicated on physicality when you look at the play-action game, off, off the power and gap scheme runs. But Parker, for our audience that may not be familiar with what Oklahoma has coming back, can you give us just a quick preview offensively and defensively on, on what you expect the Sooners to roll out there this year? Yeah, so they lost a lot of key pieces on both sides of the ball. Uh, obviously, Anton Harrison, their stud left tackle, was a first-round draft pick. Wanye Morris, their right tackle, was a third-round pick of the Kansas City Chiefs. So I think if you're looking at a position group that has the most questions as to how you replace some of the assets that you lost, it's the offensive line for Oklahoma. Now, there are a couple position groups, and I would point more so towards the interior defensive line heading into the year where – you're not necessarily losing anybody hugely significant, but you also got massive questions as to whether anybody's going to be able to step up and fill the void because that defense was not good a year ago. And to a certain extent, I would say to a great extent, it came down to personnel, just not having the dudes to be able to play the type of defense that Brent Venables wants to play and wants to scheme at Oklahoma. But the interior defensive line, certainly, and I think the wide receiver room are – two groups right now where there aren't a ton of clear answers as to who's going to be the guy. And with regard to the wide receivers, it's a kind of a jarring little factoid, but one that I've cited repeatedly, the Sooners have exactly two receivers coming back guys, two receivers returning to this roster that have caught more than three passes in an Oklahoma wow. uniform. Mm -hmm. So there's talent in that room. As I said, they've recruited really well, especially at those skill positions over the last couple of years. So it's not as if they're devoid of playmakers. I think everybody's just waiting to see who it is that emerges. Yeah. We all know, we see the commercials about gold on TV all the time that's coming up and telling you to, to buy gold and, and it's safe and it's smart. And it, that's never been more true than it is right now. I mean, you heard you know Trump talking about, uh, you know, from Mar-a-Lago, talking about the currencies crashing and the dollar will soon no longer be the world standard which will be our greatest defeat literally in 200 years. And, and he's right when you look at the devaluation of the dollar right now. And there's three reasons that the central banks are dumping the U.S. dollar. Inflation, deficit spending, and our insurmountable national debt, which is just absolutely nuts, yet we keep spending. I don't understand it. The fact is, there's only one asset that has withstood famine, wars, coaching changes, and political and economic upheaval dating back to biblical times. And that's gold. It's gold, all right? And we all know, just like, just like the Austin Powers movie, we love gold. Absolutely love it. Reed loves the stuff. She's basically Cleopatra. But with our friends over at Birch Gold, they can help you own gold in a tax-sheltered retirement account. 
That's right, Birch Gold will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k, maybe from a previous employer, into an IRA in gold, because we love it. All right, so when currencies fail, gold is a safe haven. How much more time does the dollar have? Who knows? So protect your savings with gold. They have an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau and thousands of happy customers. So do this for us if you're really down to do it and you want to make this smart play, because I'm doing it. Text BOOSTER, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, to 98 Nine eight nine eight. That's booster to nine eight nine eight nine eight, and get your free info kit on gold. Again, text booster to nine eight nine eight nine eight. It will truly be a golden decision. Parker, the arch rival Texas Longhorns will also be joining Oklahoma in the SEC. Steve Sarkeesian entering year three. You lose B. John Robinson, but they're going to bring back Quinn Ewers for a second year. Arch Manning's now on campus. And Texas is the odds on favorite right now to win the Big 12, I think going off around plus 115. Will Texas win the Big 12 this year? No, I don't think Texas will win the Big 12. And I, I don't know if this is more something that people really catch on to in big 12 territory because they're subjected to it every year. If, if, if this even extends out to where you guys are in the Southeast, but it seems the national narrative is the exact same every off season regarding Texas, which is true. This is the year, right? <laughs> yeah. This is the year. Wait, did that you say Texas or Texas A&M? I can not yeah. tell. Texas or Texas <laughs> A&M. Yeah. Well, they say everything's bigger in Texas and that's certainly the case regarding hype. As far as Texas football is concerned, I mean, it feels like we've heard the exact same storylines and the exact same narratives pushed every offseason for the last decade, and it just hasn't gelled for Texas. And they've won double digit games once in the span of that decade. That's wild. And I know Urban Meyer came out and he had those uh, comments that made the round on made the rounds on social media where he basically asserted that Texas has the most talented roster in the country. I just can't get on board with that. And I think there's talent there to be certain. But the issue for Texas, when you go back 10, 15 years, it's never been talent. Talent's always been there. The issue has been culture and getting your guys on the same page and getting them to play cohesively. And also, you can't look past the loss of B. John Robinson. And not only that, but the loss of Rashawn Johnson, who was an NFL draft pick as well at the running back position. Those two guys in the backfield, They drove the bus for Texas offensively Mm -hmm. last year. Quinn Ewers, outside of a couple games where he was solid and at times showed flashes of being spectacular, I thought was very pedestrian a season ago. So I'm not saying it can't or won't happen for Texas. I'm just saying I've been down this road enough times that I'm willing to bet on the safe option, which is that it's another year of eight, nine wins for Texas and they don't meet those preseason expectations. It's become commonplace. And add in a trip to Tuscaloosa this year, too, for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go to Alabama there early. Hey, YouTube, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you didn't know, we do a live sports show every weekday morning from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern. Make sure you check it out. We have live calls, a live chat. It's very interactive because, again, without you, there is no us.